Hello, I'm Barlint. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate the utility of the new Edis Research USRP B200 software-defined radio. This B200 will stream samples into GNU Radio, enabling us to analyze and decode different radio signals within an open source framework. Let's first take a look at the hardware. The USRP B200 is a fully integrated, single board software defined radio that connects to a host PC through a USB 3.0 interface. This entirely USB powered device provides continuous coverage from 70 MHz to 6 GHz, setting a new standard for wideband access. The USB 3.0 interface can stream up to 56 MHz of instantaneous bandwidth. The B200 is capable of full duplex communication, and the B210 supports 2x2 MIMO. It's worth noting that we're using the USRP hardware driver, UHD, so that the following applications work seamlessly with all other USRP models, such as the networkable USRP N200 and N210. Now, let's see what the B200 can do. Let's start off close to the lower limit of the B200 by receiving broadcast FM radio stations. We can listen to the stereo audio as well as decode the RDS subcarrier. Behind me, you can see Sutro Tower that houses many antennas belonging to popular radio stations in the Bay Area. Let's see if we can't pick one of them up. 5462 today. That's right. That is our prize club code. Just go to sf1037.com. Yeah, that's where you enter that. We can see the baseband spectrum centered on KKSF 103.7. Scrolling in the console is the decoded radio data messages, including traffic updates. At the bottom of the GUI, the decoded RDS information is displayed. Once the FM signal is demodulated, we can see the various subcarriers. Automatic position reporting system messages are transmitted on 144.39 MHz in the US. Here we can see APRS transmissions on the waterfall and the decoded text in the console. After FM demodulation, we can see the two-level frequency shift keying. APRS is used by amateur radio operators to broadcast messages such as the position of their vehicle or status updates from monitoring equipment. Let's skip over the aviation band for the moment and decode some AIS to build up a live marine traffic map of ships close to San Francisco. AIS operates on two fixed frequencies either side of 162 MHz. These short bursts are the AIS packets. Launching a GNU radio based decoder, we can see the same spectrum. The flow graph extracts those two channels and decodes them simultaneously. OpenCPN, which can use GPSD as a data source, then plots the broadcasting ships. We can see the smaller vessel has just done a U-turn, as well as these three vessels of varying size. Finally, let's zoom from the map into the real world and, in the distance, observe two cargo ships heading toward each other. There they are. I'm now up at San Francisco's iconic Twin Peaks. Let's see what we can't find in the 400 and 900 megahertz bands. Here you can see bursts of data, trunking control channels and analog voice communications. With the multi-channel decoder construction in GNU Radio, we can create a flow graph that will simultaneously monitor multiple channels, allowing you to record or decode each one in real time. In this simple example, we see the same chunk of spectrum as before. We also have a list of simultaneously monitored frequencies. Whenever any channel in this list becomes active, a line is drawn on the FFT plot. The green line is the channel that can be heard. Here we have pager message transmissions. Beyond identifying the protocol purely by audio, it is also possible to use other tools to zoom in in the frequency domain for closer inspection. That signal sounded like flex, but we can confirm by looking for transitions between four distinct frequencies on this FFT. The 900 MHz ISM band is incredibly busy due to the mesh network of smart meters in the area and other unlicensed equipment. Most bursts are very short, but if we run the FFT very fast, we can better observe the packets whizzing by. If we pause the display, we can zoom in here to learn about which protocols are in use. Immediately, we can see the preambles and payloads and the different types of modulation. With some adjustment to the FFT window and visual transfer function, we can clearly see some two-level FSK on either side of what is possibly Gaussian minimum shift keying. 
With this simple flow graph, we can see the pulse position modulation used by aircraft transponders to broadcast mode S messages. Here we have a mode S decoder running, which also provides visual feedback on the transmission strength. You can see the preamble at the beginning of the frame, which triggers the scope. Here I'm overlooking runway 1 left and right at San Francisco Airport, and we can see two planes performing an almost parallel landing. These aircraft are ADS-B enabled, so they continually broadcast flight information such as position, altitude, and speed. Now, they have both reported that they have made contact with the runway. Here, a Virgin America flight is about to take off. The blue line is actually an aeroplane that has flown over the airport at almost 11,000 feet. The Virgin flight is on takeoff roll. It's about to lift off, so let's also show a 3D side view so you get a good sense of the vertical component of the ascent. She's away. In a moment, you'll notice another flight approaching from the northeast. Luckily, that one is already at 43,000 feet. Messages transmitted through the aircraft communications and reporting system are seen and heard here. Messages usually contain human-readable text exchanged between airline operations, flight crew, avionics, and air traffic control. The wider waterfall now encompasses all three active channels in the area. As ACARS messages are sent to and from aircraft, they are decoded and appear in the console. In addition to the payload, messages contain the aircraft registration number and flight ID. Behind me, you can see Moffett Field's ASR-9 airport surveillance radar. Let's see if we can't use the B-200 to calculate its signal parameters. The first step is to find the radar's operational frequency. We set the gain very low since we are so close to the transmitter. This is what the signal looks like in the frequency domain and what it sounds like through an AM demodulator. Here we input the same signal into this GNU radio flow graph. The time domain is shown on the left and is turned into audio after some filtering. Once the scope trigger level is set correctly, you can observe the main pulse or bang transmitted by the radar, followed by some returns off ground clutter that are also received by our radio. The flow graph is designed to monitor the radar bangs and calculate their strength and periodicity. The right hand scope displays only the detected pulses. Observe when the reflector aligns with the video camera, there is a massive spike in amplitude. This application graphically presents the results of statistical calculations performed on the detected pulses. Here we graph the time difference between successive bangs. This histogram can then be used to determine the pulse repetition frequency, or PRF. Notice there are in fact two broad peaks. Usually radars only have one. This clustering can be seen in the raw histogram values as well. We can also inspect the distribution of pulse width and pulse strength, in addition to plotting all these features over time to see how they vary. Plotting the top three bins of the PRF histogram over time confirms our finding. This ASR9 radar is actually operating in dual PRF mode. It is both surveilling the sky and conducting weather observations. The B-200 can be used to sniff OFDM-based 802.11 A, G, and P traffic from the air. We have a GNU radio flow graph shown on the receiver, a Wi-Fi client, and an open access point configured to operate at 5.745 GHz. After running the flow graph and choosing an appropriate frequency and receiver gain, we can start Wireshark and begin decoding raw Wi-Fi packets. You can see our access points beacon frames being received. Now on the client, we connect to the wireless network. As the connection is negotiated, you can see the probe response and association response sent back to the client. Once complete, you can see some higher layer traffic appearing on the channel among the beacon frames. This was a brief overview of some of the applications that work with the USRP B200 and B210. The wide frequency coverage will allow you to experiment with many more RF applications. The USB 3.0 interface with bus power makes for a convenient device that can process a considerable amount of RF bandwidth. 
The best part is that you can download the source code from any of these applications or develop your own app with GNU Radio and the Edis Research UHD API. Thank you for watching and have fun exploring the multitude of signals around you, wherever that may be. Hello there. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks, and you? Good. Are you, are you really watching airplanes? I am really watching airplanes. That's pretty cool. Do you have ID on you? Uh, I do, yes. Is it for like school or something? Uh, it's actually for, for work. Oh, okay. 22, clerk for name. Last is Sam, Edward, Edward, boy, Edward, Robert. So where do you work? What is it? Edison yes. Research. Research. Temple. He is researching airplanes. Alright. I guess this neighbor just wanted us to check you out, make sure that you were like, okay. I figured they, they asked and I was I told them what I was doing, but I guess right. that wasn't sufficient. Nowadays people get a little scared. 